Good morning, everybody. This is Jim Feist in Las Vegas, and I'm going to bring on here Hank Goldberg, who's got to be the hottest handicapper in the nation. Three weeks out of four, he's been 6-1 and one in the pros. Absolutely awesome. Yesterday, the only loser I think you had yesterday was the Dallas Cowboys, who didn't cover the spread. Everything else was a winner. 6-1. and one. Yeah. Dallas was ahead most of the game, and uh, they uh, wound up losing by a point, although they won the game. And uh, they just, uh, you know, they, they were in a position where they actually could have covered the game, but they decided to position themselves for a winning field goal instead of going for a winning touchdown at the end of the game. But uh, they're playing so scared that, uh, you know, they wanted to just uh, get the win at the end, anything for a win at the where they are right now. Yeah, the um, there were a lot of surprising results yesterday. Um, starting out Minnesota, Minnesota and Rams on on Thursday night was a hell of a game. Then last night, the Ravens and the Steelers again was a hell of a game. So the bookends of the weekend up till of course tonight, but it was incredible. We had the uh, the big fiasco. You know something? I, I thought last night was uh, was uh, as good a bet as there was for the weekend, particularly since Colin Coward on his show last week ranked his top ten teams and left Baltimore out of his top ten, which was absurd. They're a very good football team right now. Uh, they've got Flacco playing as well as he's ever played. Uh, he's really throwing the ball well. He's spreading it around. Uh, you know, the week before, he had eight different receivers. He did that again last night. Uh, and their defense is excellent. And uh, they really, they, they, for the second week in a row, Pittsburgh didn't score in the second half. Yeah, Pittsburgh doesn't look like, you know, everybody thought they were going to be the, the team on top. But when you look at that division right now, with the Steelers, the Ravens, the Bengals, and the Browns, you got four pretty damn good teams. I mean, the Browns, yeah, they don't win much, but they have the talent to win. They just don't know how to win. They can't finish off. Uh, and yesterday, I think they got screwed on that bad call. Well, the Raiders came back and won the game. Uh, they actually got uh, screwed by poor play selection when they got greedy and threw the interception at the end of the game. So uh, the Raiders got their first win. Under Gruden. Yeah. What do you think of the Chargers? They haven't played, other than the Buffalo game, they haven't played a good game yet. I think they were overrated. I guess they were. Uh, any surprise? I've always thought that about, I have always thought that about Philip Rivers. I don't think he's ever learned how to win. No, well, you're about right there. I mean, he's been around a long time, the same year as Eli Manning uh, came out and and um, and speaking of Eli, I mean they were they were a disaster yesterday. Um, they had they had the Saints in the perfect situation coming off the overtime division win, another road game, and Eli and company they were horrible. Well, I think I said on the show yesterday that the Saints are a better road team than they are at home. Their road record over the last couple couple of years. This was 15 and five uh, going into that game, and uh, Sean Payton loves to play in New York. Uh, they've always played well there, and uh, although the although you know Breeze didn't have a good first half, they still found a way to get the lead at the end of the half, and uh, they came out in the second half and they got a balanced offense, and the, and the Giants. Uh, have issues on their offense, and uh, even the Saints were able to put them down. Their offense is not playing well. Not at all. Now, this is going to be a large controversy today concerning the way the Jets, Jags, Jack, Jacksonville Jaguars game ended, where Marone, with 30 seconds to go on the one-yard line, could have taken a knee and finished the game. They're up 25 to 12, but instead. He ran a play, scored a touchdown, and then on top of that, you've got to remember, there's no time in the game. They already had the game won. Then he goes for two. Now, that that's an integrity problem. 
in my perspective, because with gambling now on sports pretty ubiquitous in the United States since Paspo was picked off, and now you have a situation where he's playing around doing things that aren't custom and ordinary. So why did he do that? Obviously, he has a vendetta against the Jets for not hiring him once he, he quit Buffalo. This is going to cause a problem if these coaches don't know what the hell they're doing. And uh, he, he screwed up the, the total. He screwed up the teasers. Um, and people are going to start questioning that. So if they're looking for an integrity fee from gaming, they should be paying an integrity fee for the lack of discipline on their coaches. That's my personal opinion. I think they'll sit down, sit him down and talk to him about it. I think they should fine him about a million dollars so he doesn't forget the pain. They can't fine him a million dollars <laughs> because he just can say that he wasn't aware of the points. I, he can say whatever he wants, but, you know, these are... But well, he's not going to get fined. Okay. But I, I'm not saying he will. I'm saying he should. That's, that's my opinion. I'm saying you should. You shouldn't be messing around that way. And this is going to be a big problem. Because a lot of people, money changes hands on integrity. And that there was no integrity from him at the end of that game. Just my opinion. Well, this is the first year where integrity is going to be an issue. And uh, like I said, uh, the uh, league will uh, send him a message about it. Since this is the first time it's been an issue with him. I mean, I don't know the guy. I'm sure he's a very good coach and a nice guy, but just uh, it's not a personal attack. It's just everybody, this is going to light up. It's just kind of like another <laughs> another issue for the United States to deal with. But uh, the Patriots, dead and buried, can't win anymore, can't score points, et cetera, et cetera. I think they shut everybody up on that one. Well, I think that... You know, uh, Pete Schrager, who has uh, been killing people. I mean, you talk about people who are killing people with legal gambling right now. He's been wrong every Thursday night, and he did this big speech about everybody's ignoring uh, his buddy, uh, the Dolphins coach, and how the Dolphins are so great. Uh, they're 3-0, and and it's about time they started paying attention to him. Well, they paid attention to him. They came back to earth. And they're not a good team. As I said, they're the worst 3-0 and team in history. They beat three terrible teams going up to New England where they never play well. And they've lost five of their last trips up there by an average of 18 points a game. Uh, and, uh, you know, their, their quarterback, who Schrager loves, played a, a terrible game. And uh, he's, not, he's just not that good. And he gets up against a team like New England, and he's... And he, uh, he, he comes back to earth. Now they go to Cincinnati next week, where they're going to get crushed again. Yeah, Cincinnati. Schrager's a terrible handicapper. He might be a good reporter. <clears throat> but talk about burying people with, uh, with gambling right now. He's at the top of my list. Well, since PASPA was overturned, a lot, there's a lot of com people coming out of the woodwork and pretending they're handicappers when they have nothing no idea what they're doing. Because picking winners and, and, and being a point spreader, way too different. <laughs> it's a well, he said Thursday night that uh, the Rams were going to win by at least two scores. They didn't. No, they did not. Um, okay. And they don't discuss it on the show afterwards either. No, of course not. I mean, Adam Shine the other day, last week, I think he picked every game wrong. And I'm talking about every game on the board. He might have had one right, and I think it was the Colts um, that covered the spread two weeks ago. And, uh, oh, speaking of that, what kind of play call was that at the end of the game by the Colts head coach? Um, that, was, that was a very, well, that was a very strange call. In your own territory, fourth and five, and if you don't get it, you're giving the other team a shot at the field goal, which happened, and they lose the game instead of winning or tying. Uh, I didn't. I didn't get that. 
Well, apparently uh, Luck uh, took, the, uh, took the rap for it, said that the uh, play was there for him, and he just didn't uh, produce. Well, it's right. He's right. It was there, and he threw the ball short. It should have been. He should have completed it, but it's not a game of perfection. Uh, but the risk reward there was pretty, pretty strange. Pretty strange play. How about Mitch Trubisky? Where the heck did that come from? He played against a team that uh, always struggled going up north, whatever time of year it is. I got a problem with the uh, Tampa coach whose uh, idea of a vote of confidence was to say that, uh, that his quarterback, who had had two sensational games and actually had a great second half last week, it almost pulled his team through against Pittsburgh in the second half, and then he announced as well, uh, we'll start him again, and uh, if he doesn't play well, we've got another quarterback ready to go in there. That's really a great vote of confidence for his quarterback, who uh, uh, who made his coach look good for the first two weeks of the season. I thought that was a terrible way, uh, pronouncement to make going into a big game in Chicago like he did. And uh, no, no quarterback deserve, who played as well as uh, his quarterback had been playing deserves that kind of a lack of vote of confidence going into a game against a very tough Bears defense. So... I agree. Bears uh, good. The Bears are good. The, yeah, the Bears have um, they got the great pass rush thanks to the Oakland Raiders trading that monster <laughs> that uh, they got they got rid of, and um, and their defense overall is very strong. Their running game is good, and Trubisky was highly criticized because he wasn't stretching the field, and yesterday was a totally different person. Um, I mean, they they played down in Arizona the week before and were very fortunate to win. They looked pretty bad. Yeah. They won the game, but they didn't look good doing it. Totally yesterday was a total different situation. With well, some, I'll tell you something. Nagy is a very good coach, and the, the Bears are for real. Uh, so the one weakness they have is the quarterback who will not be consistent. So the, uh, get ready for him to not be so good at times. The um, that division again is, I mean Minnesota, the Packers, the Bears, and the Lions. I mean they're all of those teams are capable on any given week of putting up a pretty good effort or a pretty bad one. That's going to be a tough division. Um, we talked a little bit about the Chargers, but you, you know we thought in the beginning the Chargers were just going to run away with the West and the AFC. That doesn't look like the case. They are struggling badly. And you got Kansas City there. We're going to watch tonight what they do. They're a road favorite in division, which is a tough spot to be in. But the way they've been playing, who the heck wants to stand in the way of them? Well, they've uh, their record, uh, they, they've beaten Denver the last five times they played them. So it's, uh, they, were, they were winning against Denver when... Uh, when they weren't so great offensively. Uh, and Denver is coached by Vince Joseph, who is another guy I question why, they, why they're sticking with him. Um, um, I know that you, uh, you knew, uh, I can't remember the kid's name, but the quarterback now for, for the 49ers, Beathard, I thought he played pretty well yesterday. In that game. He's not bad. C.J. Beathard. C.J. Beathard, right. He played, he played pretty well. And, you know, they have a head coach that's a heck of an offensive coordinator was with Atlanta when they were averaging 32 points a game and they, they went into the Super Bowl, had that 28-3 halftime lead. Uh, he's a heck of an offensive coordinator. So uh, Beathard, uh, if he learns to protect himself a little bit and not take so many chances physically... Uh, he can. He looks like he can step in for that team and do a good job. He's okay. He's uh, he's adequate uh, as a fill-in guy. Uh, I'll tell you, the guy who's doing a heck of a job is the coach in Tennessee. They beat Philadelphia yesterday, 
it's a great win for them. They've now won three straight games. Rabel and, is uh, Rabel is doing yeah. a magnificent job. Yes. Yeah. He really is. He, he's. Um, I told you that guy. Could, I told you that guy could coach. Oh, you're right. You're right. Because he he's been on the short end of it each week with injured quarterbacks and stuff. But Mariota played well yesterday. And um, you now Rabel's tough. He, <laughs> I mean, you got you got. Well, I don't know what I don't know what to make of uh, the Texans. I mean, yesterday they 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 looked good at times. Yesterday uh, they did win the game. Questionable situation at the end of the game, and that was a road win in division, which is which is good. Um, if Watson can play as well as he did yesterday, or even better, uh, they can be tough. I'm not a fan of the coach, but. You know, that's uh, every coach makes mistakes, so you have to do that. You got to give him credit for whatever he does right. But that's a tough division too. The Colts, with luck, they're real. Uh, the Jags, Tennessee, Texans—that's another tough division. Well, I told you the problem with the Colts, and that is that they're so afraid that luck is going to get hurt again that they're playing a dink and dunk the, uh, offense, which makes them vulnerable. In key situations, and I thought that uh, that uh, Houston would be good enough uh, to outscore them, and because uh, you know they had been uh, running up over 300, they've been averaging 350 yards on offense uh, and passing in the last two weeks. They just had been having trouble scoring, and they finally put it all together offensively against the. Uh, very mediocre Indianapolis defense. So, uh, you know, as, as uh, much as, you know, you can question what uh, Jacksonville did, remember Jacksonville came off a game where, you know, they uh, they were upset by Tennessee the week before, and uh, there may have been um, a method to his trying to get them back on track offensively. Uh, besides trying to beat the spread. Well, they, they, on paper, the, the Texans look really strong. If they put it together, you know, I predicted in the beginning they'd win that division. It hasn't looked very good until yesterday, until they won. But, and, and you know, and still there's questions. But uh, I didn't expect Tennessee to play as well as they're playing. I think I underrated uh, what Rabel could do with that team because he's doing... He's per per performing magic with them. John Gruden finally got a win yesterday. His first one since coming back as a head coach. We can call him the $110 million fan if you want to. But um, again, the Browns played a good game. And, you know, if you look back over the four games they've played this year, they could have, you know, break here, break there, a lack of mistake here or there, they could be 4-0. Well, they also find ways to lose. They haven't uh, lost that propensity. And, uh, you know, the Raiders do have a good quarterback. He can put up numbers. So, But their defense is horrible. Yeah, they got a big game going on this week. It's going to be, well, they're going to go up against the Chargers. But, like I said, that game has already moved from 7.5 down to 5. Uh, I think people are starting to realize the Chargers are a little bit overrated. Uh, Hank, uh, anything else you want to add before we sign off? Well, baseball playoffs are starting. I got two plays today so. already. <laughs> two games, I okay. got two plays. Um, yeah, the, the, it's a uh, shame St. Louis came down to the finish line and couldn't quite get in. I liked them the way they were uh, playing the second half of the season, but uh, they didn't make it, so... Uh, but uh, the Cubs, the Cubs will be tough, uh, and uh, Yankees. Uh, and the Yankees are playing well now at the end of the year. That's going to be interesting. And uh, so now I'll get interested. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Well, you know, looking at the teams that are in the playoffs, playing playoff games. 
Which bullpen do you think has the edge of the of the game? The teams that are in it. Uh, well, the Dodgers uh, closer is back, and uh, I think uh, the Red Sox bullpen is is uh, loaded. <laughs> I guess my dog agrees with me, Hank. <laughs> no, it disagrees. <laughs> or disagrees, right. Well, Hanks plays 6-1 and one yesterday in the pros. He has a play up tonight in tonight's game each and every day, each and every week at jimfeist.com. Thank you, Hank, for your time today. And everybody out there, thank you for listening. And we'll talk to you again on Wednesday. Thanks, Hank. Have a good day, Jim. You too.